Good morning, everyone. Um, cool. Uh, thank you for having me here um, and getting invited. It's always nice to come to this college. Uh, this place is very, you know, a uh, lot of memories here. I grew up here. So I'd like to start talking about Manipal. I grew up here. I was studied here for 21 years of my life. And uh, like you can see, there is uh, uh, there's not many places that you can actually go eat, get inspired to, uh, that is there right now. But when I grew up, I was very lucky because there were a lot of weddings. My parents took me to eat food, a lot of uh, open ayanas, a lot of temple things. And one thing that was always there was uh, they asked me for my opinion. I think that was the only opinion they asked me. There was no other opinion they asked me. You have to wear this clothes. That's it. Go. Uh, but after all this thing, they always asked me, what do you think? Uh, did you like the Dali toy? Did you like the sweet? Did you, what do you think about it? How was it from the different function? And I, was, I felt like awesome. And you know, this is something that I really wanted to take forward. And I joined Waksha. Why did I join here? To be honest, I thought this was the only school that taught hotel management. <laughs> I didn't know there was anything else, to be honest. I remember coming and standing there. One guy was like, what's your item score? I was like, what is that? Uh, and because we are from Manipal, and all, uh, all of us, most of my friends were either doctors or engineers, uh, nothing else. And it was, it was really surprising to see those other colleges uh, that taught this, <laughs> to be honest. And uh, anyways, I got the brochure. And uh, when I got the brochure, I was talking to my friend. And he's like, uh, telling, he's asking me what, what all categories is there in this uh, college. And I was like, there's something called FMB production, FMB service one, housekeeping. He's like, OK. And I remember, I don't know what FMB stands for. And he's like, yo, it's food and beverage. You know, Are you seriously going to do this? Like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to give it a shot. Why not? And yes, this is where I joined. I was very lucky to be here for four years. Uh, and I always wanted to do something with food. I was not particular if I want to be a pastry chef or I wanted to be uh, a hot kitchen chef. I didn't know what. But I wanted to do something with food. And after graduation, I need to tell you that I've been very lucky. I've been very lucky that I've got great opportunities. Uh, I had fantastic. Uh, mentors here uh, to tell me, Chef Tiru and Chef Vasanthan both encouraged me to you know, really pursue this forward. They gave me really good solid directions of where I need to do and what I need to do. And you know, it was really supporting uh, from that. So I took, after I graduated from Waksha, I took a year's break before I went to CIA. And I started work baking at Valley View. And uh, there was one incident that kind of changed the whole scene. Uh, I was baking. And one day, there was this, so it was divided. There was one chef called Narayan. <laughs> it's this short. Uh, and uh, four of us were baking inside. And the last thing to do before you left was to make the donut dough. And I used to come at 6.45 in the morning. Uh, my dad used to drop me uh, outside the Valley View thing. And that guy was standing outside. And I was like, Dad, that's the guy who's teaching me how to bake. And my dad was like, OK, cool. And I go there, and this guy, we had to wear neck scarf those days. Uh, and then I remember him drag pulling me there and taking me through the kitchen through and to the bake shop. And he's like, look what he did to the donut dough. And uh, it's messed up. It didn't fluff. So I asked him, what, what went wrong? He's like, you didn't follow the recipe. And that was his excuse. And I was like, OK, but what, what didn't I follow? Can you please help me? He said, no. And that was, that's what it, that stopped. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> while working at uh, Valley View, uh, uh, I also started working at this halwa kitchen in Urpi. And uh, this is where I was learned how to make uh, cat halwas, kushman halwas, banana halwas. Um, I was got to see how they make Mysore Park and stuff like that. And I was very curious when they're making a sugar-based sweet, because I asked him, why is that at that particular consistency you're putting something into it? And they didn't really have an example. They would look at a particular stage where the sugar is being cooked, and they would just put the base in, mix it, and cook it. 
And I was like, okay, but why at that particular stage? And there was no particular answer given to me at that point. So this made me want to get into Culinary Institute because I thought this is where uh, they would answer all these questions for me. And uh, thanks to Chef Thiru and Chef Vasanthan who told me that's the place you need to go. So they will answer all your questions and you'll know how it's going to improve. And this is why I went to the Culinary Institute. After graduating, or during my time there, I got a chance to work at Jean George. This is where everything changed for me. Um, the kitchen environment was fun. I never expected it to be like that. Uh, it was very intense. There was music being played, uh, Daft Punk, Metallica, any kind of all sorts of music. And I was like, wow, I thought it would be intense. It would be very strict, because the only thing I saw previous to that was Gordon Ramsay's kitchen in uh, TV. Uh, so I thought, I didn't know it was so fun. But this is where I started to learn how to play desserts, learn how to write happy birthday, learn how to uh, play 40 desserts by myself for a period of three hours, um, how what petty forts are. I figured out there's something called tasting menu, which I never heard before. Uh, it was really good in education. And uh, the chef was always there, working really hard along with us. Um, and I learned all my basics really well at this phase. I then joined Gotham Bar and Grill. I thought I need to go to another intense kitchen. Now, Gotham Bar and Grill was something that was crazy because we used to play 400 desserts on every night. And it was a three-star restaurant, and you had to be really quick. Uh, it was me trying to scoop. It was two of us that plated 400 desserts in a matter of three hours. So we had to scoop around uh, 10, let's say for 10 scoops of ice cream under a minute. So you had to be really fast, and it was chaos. There was so much noise. The chef used to always say, go fast, go fast, or go to India, don't be here. You know, it was just like, I don't know what was going on, and, and, but I had to prove myself, and I went through it. It made me strong. It made me uh, you know, get a really good experience at this point of time. I also started working in the night during my time at Gotham at a bakery called Amy's Bread Bakery. Here, uh, I, this is my favorite place to work because it was amazing. You could eat as much as bread and butter you wanted. It was the fresh bread. Um, you, we used to push out at least uh, 100 to 200 kilos of bread every night. We had to bake around 1,000 loaves of baguettes, chiabatas, an oven that's bigger than me. Um, and, uh, you know, and I met this guy called Wayne here. He was the main head baker out here. And I used to mess up all my baguettes for the first six months that I worked there. And he was like, don't worry, it will eventually happen. I used to burn all the bread and most of it. And uh, he'd be like, don't worry, eventually you'll get it. And I had never seen that happen in the previous two restaurant because they were like, if you can't do it, get out of my face. And it was a very different style of working here. That's why I kind of enjoyed it. It didn't really strike to me much at that point of time. I didn't really realize this until I came back to India and I joined Olive Beach and Olive Beach. I became the pastry chef after a year after working here. And I thought there'd be a lot of people who want to come and work with me because I have this really good experience, really good resume and people used to come and work with me, but no one lasted with me. For let's say in two months, I lost nine employees because I was arrogant, I didn't really understand. I was using my experience from, my previous experience from Gotham Bar and Grill and Jean George and was being very aggressive. I was like, if you can't do it, get out of my kitchen. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, there was actually a bet that was going on. If you last with uh, him for more than a month, I'll take you to a restaurant and feed you. And, <laughs> and I was like, what is going on? So I called, I spoke to a bunch of people and they all said that if you can't have them do it, then you do it. You know, why do you want, you know, you try it, you work harder. So I thought, okay, I'll give that a shot, why not? And that's what I started doing. But then I didn't have time for myself at this point. So I started doing most of the prep. I was doing the same thing over and over again. I really got frustrated. I thought this is not the way to go. I then called up Wayne. I wrote him an email and saying this is the problem I'm going through. And after a long chat, he suggested me that this is what he used to do. He used to take, he used to sit in his subway from his home uh, to the bake shop sit quietly for 20 minutes, didn't use his phone, didn't read anything, just sat. And I think it was like, it was like a form of meditation that just basically calmed down and he basically observed what, he took, what kind of you know, breathing and stuff like that. And I thought I'll give that a shot. Why not? Why don't let me try this? So before going to work, I used to take 20 minutes, sit in my apartment in a comfortable chair, 
and then just sit quiet and no TV, nothing, just quiet, just breathe and then go to work. And this is what I want to talk about today. I think this is the most important thing that you guys need to have. Um, you'll get enough training, you'll have enough schools, you have enough great chefs who will teach you to be who you are and everything, but without this, I don't think, uh, I think this will be the most important, this will make you take it to the next level, this is what I feel. So this is what basically it is. It's a mental state that's achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment. So I practiced this for two months on a time, and this is what I started to feel, acceptance. I was ready to accept that I don't know enough. I'm not good enough to handle, take care of my own team, how much over experience I have. I need to understand my staff's issues. I can't make them work 10 hours or 12 hours. So the kind of training that I went to, I can't have that focus on other people. And I started to accept this, you know, that okay, I'm in India and things are very different right now. And I also started asking help from my staff. I think a lot of Chefs, including me, uh, are very egoistic. We refuse to ask for help from other people. Um, you know, we, if somebody asks us, what do you think of this? And if they say something bad, you feel really hurt and you'll be like, oh, they, I don't know, think they know what they're eating. They don't really eat this thing. Um, so I started asking a lot of help from my staff, saying that, are you happier? Do you want to work with me? What is that you want to see a difference in this kitchen? Are you learning? What is that you want to learn? If, this, uh, if there is a way that if you're not learning enough here, how is that we can focus on something else? And we started having a bunch of small classes that I would like to say in, uh, at Olive, uh, teach them basics. Uh, I was also doing desserts that was way beyond what my staff knew. Um, and I was just like, that's not the way, because they were like, we need to know our basics. So I was starting to talk, starting off, talk this, and it was very important. You get more real negative feedback. It's basically, if anybody has to say something bad, you get hurt. But it's fine, you know. Nobody has to talk great things about you. And there are a lot of people who will talk bad things about it, and you should be aware of it. See where the positiveness is there in the negative part of it, and try to improve on that. Uh, and that, practicing this really helped me uh, overcome. Being patient. Uh, you need to be really patient in this business. If you want to reach somewhere this high, you need to start low. You can't start way high. You need to be really patient. If you're not producing best desserts in the kitchen and you have a vision, it will eventually happen. And it will only happen if your staff is good. And if you're treating your own staff and yourself, you will never reach that. Um, so you need to be really patient about training your staff. I started spending more time. Before, I used to throw the caramel. If the caramel was not good, I used to throw it in the dustbin. If the cake was dry, I would yell at them, shout, saying that you're stupid, you guys don't know anything. And I would do it. Um, um, but then being patient was basically saying that it was like, it's cool, let them mess it up, I'm going to stand next to them. I messed up so many breads and loaves, and that guy actually gave an opportunity to take it forward. And all of you guys are going to do that, and you guys are going to get frustrated. You might do something, you need to do it over and over and over again, like butchering a fish, you might mess it up. You should not get frustrated with it. And doing, practicing this will actually, like it's okay, it's fine, but you need to learn from it and go ahead with it. It also improves your creativity. You start seeing things in a very different way. You start seeing things very simpler. You start seeing uh, things in a way that, why do I need to, do all this stuff if I really, this is, this is what I want my guests to eat, this is what I want to put out. And it'll also see, make your things very clear. And this is something that I noticed. So after practicing for two, three months and after a while of this, I also started to, started to sharpen my senses. So then I started using to experiment this. The first is taste. Um, usually when uh, most chefs usually like to put like 15 different components in a plate, uh, trying to showcase all the techniques they know, trying to show that, okay, this is happening, that's happening, but kind of losing the main focus of what is that they want to put it out, what is that kind of flavor that you want, especially in pastry. You start seeing one cake, with some smoke coming from somewhere, and then you have this thing coming here, you don't know how to eat it, you don't know, you'll be afraid if something's going to bite me, or, you know, you get all confused. But same time, people don't want to go to a really nice restaurant and get a slice of cake. You just need to learn how to balance it. And 
Uh, here I've used an example called caramel, uh, where I've used just a basic caramel. And I made a caramel parfait. We have caramel ice cream. We have a caramel paper. It still feels like it's modern. It's not just there. But again, it's still, uh, still relevant to new. And this is basically how to help me. Before, two, three years ago, I would try to put like a caramel foam. And this, it's not that those are uh, needed for this. It kind of helped me balance. It's OK. I want my guests to really taste caramel in this dessert. And how can I impact that? And this is and my ego of showing that I, want, I have all these techniques. I don't want to show it. It's fine. You, know, you need to accept it. Sight. This is something that I want to always was inspired is this, how can I just show a basic, it's very clean plated desserts. You want people to just look at it and be like, okay, uh, this is it. You don't want some, like I mentioned before, you don't want uh, a crater of moon on your plate. You want to just stand there and uh, that really helped me to focus. So here is just a chocolate custard cake and a chocolate mint and a mint ice cream. To keep it as simple as possible, uh, directly to the flavor, uh, nothing too complicated. Even a regular staff can plate this. Uh, you don't really have to be behind them, tell them, no, put that dot right, put this wrong. Oh, I want the dots to be big to small. And, you know, uh, this will really help them to make it your, kind of making your staff easy, you're making it yourself easy as well. This is something that really helped me. Sound. This is, so I've been talking for a while, and so is Thomas and uh, Doctor. So I want to do this. I want your participation in this next uh, event. You guys ready? Yes? yes? Cool. Uh, what I want to do is when I raise, so I'm going to distribute half and half, so that half and this half. So when I raise this half, I want you guys to do mm, as softly as possible. Yeah? Is it possible? <laughs> cool. Let's try this. OK, cool. Now when I raise this hand, I want this crowd to go crazy. I want them to go shout like hooligans. I want the vice chancellor to come and say, done, this conference is closed. Done. We don't want more and more chefs in this thing. Uh, you know, I want that kind of noise, you know, like crazy. OK, let's give it a shot. Cool. <laughs> come on, don't stop. <laughs> Oh, that's it. Until I'm, huh? They're scared of Tirusa. Okay, we want Tirusa to get leave. Okay. <laughs> cool. I want you guys to really scream until I put my hand down. Okay. Let's try it again. Cool. Come on. Oh, it's so weak. I didn't expect Vaksha like this. You know. <laughs> Okay, cool. So what we're going to try doing is we're going to have this together. I'm going to raise this arm. Please don't stop doing what you guys have told you to do. And same time, please don't stop. When I raise this hand, don't stop doing that. Yeah? Cool? Cool. We'll start it. Hopefully it works. <laughs> Okay, cool. You see how it's so chaos and noise and so loud, but this quietness is still there? That's how most chefs' minds are, to be honest. We are not cooking here. There is so much noise in your head because you have to deal with your staff, you have to deal with your own problems, you have vendors, you have, to, uh, you have other people, you have something that's very beautiful called social media where people want to talk to you. Uh, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep, you have problems on Facebook if you don't request, they, if you don't like their post or anything. You have all this crazy noise that is going in your head. How are you going to focus? How are you going to focus on cooking? Uh, you're already frustrated because the idea that you want really want to create, it's not coming on the plate because there's so much noise going on in your head. How do you balance this? And this is something that really helped me. Like, you know, you're sitting quiet. Learn me to focus on things that I really want to happen. Uh, what, and you know, give me some time to like, you know, this is not important right now. 
I'll take care of it when I have to. For me, this is important. Now it's time for me to create. When I'm creating something or thinking of an idea, I'm at peace. And it really helps a lot to do this. Next is touch. Has a pastry chef, most of things are done by your hand. Let's say maybe a bread, croissant, scooping ice creams. Everything is done by your hand. Checking the sugar syrup consistency, everything. And if you don't pay attention to how your dough feels, how the consistency of your butter is, what consistency your sugar syrup is, there are new technology by putting your thermometer and checking, but without really knowing how, what is it by your hand, it's very difficult to actually go ahead in this uh, particular thing, is what I feel. And uh, this one thing that really made sense with touch was that it answered the most basic question when I started off. How did that halwa know at what time to put the basin into the sugar? It was all by touch, it's experience, it's the feel. He's been doing it, he's been paying attention to each and every small details. He can just look at it and he'll be like, okay, cool. You know, most of the time when we are seeing something boiling, our minds are somewhere else. We are thinking what to do next, or what is happening in the current world, or something else. It's not focused. Uh, it is, and it, hap it happens to me a lot. And uh, I think if you start paying attention to how your croissant dough feels, how your donut dough feels, you can actually get really good at it. Um, you know, uh, just by look or feel, you can actually say what's going on right, what's going on wrong, and it takes a lot of practice and. Uh, practicing this mindfulness by just living in the present will actually help you this to happen really quick. And the one of the crows on dough, just by feel. Smell is the last thing. Now, with smell, it's crazy because uh, you've been always, you grew up smelling in your parents' kitchen, grandma's kitchen and everything. And just imagine you're walking into your professional kitchen and you think of the same smell and something that reminds you of your nostalgic feel. You know what? that smells the same way when I started. And it's, it, it's so happy. I think that happiness when you walk in and you can smell that fish curry or chicken curry or a fresh baked bread will just get you back to your memories back in. And I think that is pure happiness. No matter what awards you get, where you're talking, that happiness of the pure smell, that nostalgia, that taking you way back to where you started and why you started when you grew up. And if you start paying attention, it's it always there in, it's always there. And if something that smells bad, you can actually, rec uh, you know, realize. What was the great thing about the most important thing of practicing mindfulness was my team. After two years of practice, after just the next three years, I, nobody left my team. No one left. My initial problem of staff wanting to work with me never happened. Uh, in fact, people wanted to grow, people wanted to come and work with me. My staff was only growing. Uh, people were, didn't want to leave. I was saying, please leave. We need new people. I'm fed up of seeing your face. They're like, no, we're not leaving you. Unfortunately, that dog lived there, so he didn't have an option to leave initially. So, <laughs> uh, this is uh, for the future. I know there are a lot of chefs who are talking to their sous chefs uh, about this. You, as young chefs and cooks who are going to be really good, who are going to the future, I. Uh, I really say that you guys have to start practicing this. Take ten, at least 10 minutes time off from your uh, busy schedule and just try practicing. Just sit quietly, watch your breath, um, just pay attention to what is happening when you're practicing uh, at, in your own cooking, in your own school. Pay attention to what is happening, pay attention to all the small details. And if you start putting these ideas at this time, imagine when you hit 30, then uh, you know, It'll, your experience will be way more better than anything. I think it's all about cooking. It's not, it's how much attention you pay to detail. And uh, if you can somehow get that with you, it'll make you better, not only a better cook, but a better person, a better individual, a better boss, because you start paying attention to your staff. You start paying attention to yourself, which a lot of, lot of us don't do. You start paying attention to what is happening across. You start paying attention to a very random person that you might meet on the road and actually give time and you might learn from that person. If, you know, this is what I watch to do. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, please ask. <laughs> Uh, hello, Chef. I'm Kriti from First Air Baka. My question to you is, how would you like to 
uh, differentiate your learning experience at Waksha from that in CIA? Uh, Waksha actually, to be honest, gave me a lot of confidence to where I am. Um, in, in Waksha, it's, I didn't learn pastry, I didn't, uh, didn't learn cooking, but I just learned how to... There were so many students, it was the first time I'm actually meeting a lot of people from outside, in, you know, outside Manipal, to be honest, uh, and seeing different cultures and stuff like that. CI was a very specialized course. Um, it's, it's a, I took pastry as my main thing and I learned only pastry. What Waksha taught me was how to be ready for CIA how to talk to people, how to deal with other people from different parts of India, how to uh, hang out, how to go out, you know. That's, it made me a better individual at Waksha than at CIA, uh, to be honest. I met a lot of students from other colleges. They were not like us. We were different. Good afternoon, Chef. Good afternoon. I'm Sagrika from First Year Baka. So my question is like, as you said, basics are important, mindfulness is important. So, what are the other key qualities to become a successful pastry chef? Um, I think that basics is something that is very important. I think a lot of people actually want to do crazy stuff. Uh, to be a really good pastry chef, uh, in the end of the day, we all like to eat a chocolate cake. And that's the most basic. And if you don't know how to make a really good thing. I think also repetition, practice, being patient about your own field. Uh, you know, these days what happens is you start seeing another person doing something else somewhere in another part of the country called social media. It's like, why can't I do that? Why am I not doing it? Um, you know, you don't have, shouldn't feel that way. I think in frustration. I don't think that needs to be there in pastry. Pastry can be very frustrating at times because it's a lot of practice. You need to keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. And I think uh, bes besides the basics, mindfulness, practice is, you know, uh, it's very important. It's, it's, I think that's, the, that's very important for me. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Hi, Chef. Hello. My name is Kushal Bajwarya. Hi. Uh, chef, I wanted to ask you, could you mention some positive work culture points in the United States which inspired your life? I think they let you, they accept to be who you are. Um, there is they, you know, and what I realized when I started working in India is this is, this is what it is and this is what you have to do. In US is, okay, this is what you know, let's, let's change it. Think beyond what is there. That really opened my, oh, you can do this or you can do that. Uh, you know, that's something that really helped me uh, working in the United States. That was really good positive. And also, you don't have to be strict. You don't have to be, you can put your point across by telling this is what it is. You can, your kitchen environment can be fun. You can have music. You can chit chat. It's, you know, as far as the main objective is getting done. That I never saw it in India uh, when I started off in my career. Uh, and also, they took time to explain things. You know, most chefs actually, if they didn't tell you then and then, um, you eventually learned, they would come back to you and say this is what is wrong. Um, you know, they always got back to their cooks. That's something. Uh, was a really good positive thing, which I thought. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, if anybody wants to ask me any questions, you can totally ask me later on and everything. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me.